Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mark Cutter, and I'm running as an independent candidate here in the Castle Ward for Lancaster City Council. And I'd first of all like to apologise for my absence from my video channel for the last couple of days. Uh, I had a non-gender specific form of flu, uh, which uh, didn't allow me to uh, record anything on video because uh, you wouldn't have been able to understand a word that I said. Um, now that that seems to have gone, uh, and uh, I can get back in front of the camera, um, it's time for me to talk about a few of the important issues that I picked up while I've been door knocking uh, during uh, the days before I had to take two days off sick. And uh, I've been speaking to people who are hopefully going to vote for me. And one of the key issues that's come up, and I've mentioned it before, uh, is the importance of the cultural heritage of our city. And uh, as you know, that's one of the key issues uh, that the poster over my shoulder um, tells you that I'll be campaigning on, the need for us to invest in culture in this city. And I'm not saying we invest in culture at the detriment to anything else. Uh, it is well known since the time of the Renaissance that the uh, time of rise in the arts is a time of rise in industry, and we need to see the two of them supported side by side. And indeed, I was at the Business Improvement District, AGM, last night, and I was really pleased to see the huge amount of investment in the arts put forward by that group, which I'm on the management group of, um, towards things like Lancaster Music Festival, Lancaster Jazz Festival, Light Up Lancaster, um, to make sure that um, arts are attracting people into the city. But we need to do more, and we need to see uh, the importance of our cultural assets being realised here in the city and across the region. And um, we need to do that by working as um, advocates for the city, as elected councillors, to work with organisations such as the Duchy that controls Lancaster Castle to ensure that that is developed um, quickly and sympathetically in a manner that creates it as a real national leading tourist attraction and creates this as a genuine city of culture and heritage. And I've noticed, um, thanks to a post on Facebook by Nick Lakin of the Lancaster Guardian, that um, Lancaster has been identified as a national heritage city. And I was really excited thinking this was an award from UNESCO or uh, which deals with uh, international heritage sites, uh, world heritage sites, sorry or English Heritage, and slightly disappointed to find out that it's actually um, through membership of uh, Visit Lancashire, which is our local tourism board, that we've been joined into a list of heritage cities. Now, it does mean that we've met, met a couple of targets, but it doesn't really mean anything other than an aspirational marketing um, ploy. And that's a bit of a disappointment to me. But it's great that we're there, and it's great that um, People will be driven through that website to come to visit Lancaster. But we need to do more to make sure they've got something to do when they get here. Uh, and that doesn't mean just during the time of year that the uh, Lancaster Music Festival is happening, or the Jazz Festival, or Light Up Lancaster, or the Christmas lights are being turned on, but actually all through the year. And that's going to need investment. And some of that investment will come from our local government grants, uh, which we will need to lobby heavily with the... Um, uh, the County Council to make sure they're supported and some of that investment may have to come from other sources whether it's through levies such as the Business Improvement District levy or whether it's through direct financing and fundraising as civic leaders that is also an important thing for us to consider. Uh, the other control that the Council has as a City Council is over things such as licensing uh, and the zoning of retail spaces and art spaces and I think by taking a pragmatic view to these things and ensuring an appropriate uh, allowance of, for example, live music, art exhibitions, film exhibitions and so on, bearing in mind recent changes in licensing law that make this easier, um, we should see a natural growth also in the private arts. And it's very pleasing to see the opening of new art studios uh, here in Castle Ward already, um, such as the Elves Gallery, and also new photography studios, uh, to see more and more venues participating in live music through Lancaster Music Festival and maintaining that throughout the year. We need to do more at city level to support it, 
to see events taking place on the new plinth in, in uh, Market Square and making use of Sun Square and the other spaces in the city on a more regular basis. Let's try and aspire to there being an event on that plinth monthly, fortnightly, weekly, more than once a week. Let's really try and energize things. Let's not have it that first Friday of the month is the only time that these spaces are used. Let's not have it that we don't know what to do with ourselves and therefore we go to Preston, to Manchester, Kirby Lansdale, Kendall to enjoy arts experiences when we have great experiences here. And somebody said to me when I was knocking on the door in um, Super City Street up towards Fairfield, you know, the museum has got huge exhibitions and a huge amount of things within its manifest and within the wider county manifest that aren't on display. The castle has got um, huge amounts of space and also lots of interesting cultural assets as well. Why not put two and two together and make new exhibition spaces? I'm not in charge of either of those um, institutions and in point of fact as a councillor I wouldn't be in charge of either of those institutions either. But I would be in a position to work with the organisations that are and to make suggestions and to lobby for a better and greater use of the spaces that we've got and to ensure that the ones that we do have, whether they're public outdoor performance spaces, whether they are buildings with cultural heritage already, to make sure that those are better promoted and better developed. And we also need to do more, I think, to cash in. And it is a cash in issue. It is about tourism. One of the benchmarks for this heritage status we've just been awarded is a certain level of tourism turnover. Um, and I'm really interested to find the information on which that's based. Um, one of the things we need to do is to cash in better market our cultural assets here in the city. And again, the Business Improvement District, of which I am an active member, is doing quite a lot of that work already. But we need to see some of that function being led by our council. And we need to see people engaged in the council who are keen to support that. And it falls on me now to wish you happy 30th of April. And what is the 30th of April? For those of you who don't know, it's International Jazz Day. And one of the things this city is famous for, as we all know, is its jazz. Whether it's the jazz festival that takes place in um, the autumn, or whether it's jazz that takes place during the music festival, which also takes place in the autumn, or whether it's the weekly sessions at places like the Robert Gillow, the John O'Gaunt, or the Stonewell Tavern, where jazz is performed on Monday nights, Sundays, and um, Thursdays, respectively. Um, whether it's any of those things, this is must be one of the UK's leading cities for jazz. So let's celebrate International Jazz Day tonight, and uh, if you can, try to listen to a little bit of live music somewhere. Have a nice day, and remember how important it is for us to invest in culture here in the city of Lancaster. If you want good services, vote for Cutter. If you want the Yasty Thrive, vote for Cutter, please for Castle Ward. Castle Ward. <laughs>